spectacular day here at Rogers Center. The roof is wide open. Baltimore Orioles have won 95 games. They're going to the postseason. They will play on Thursday in the AL Division Series. Now let's take a look at the lineup for Buck Show Walters Orioles. I'd like to take Casilla is called up to play in this game today. Steve Pierce against Jay Happ is 5 for 15. This is going to be an interesting matchup all day long. Pierce has a 357 average against fastballs. And Jay Happ has used an awful lot of fastballs. Nelson Cruz back in the lineup. He's the DH. The last 14 games have been good. Six extra base hits, seven RBIs during that span. A distinctly right-handed hitting lineup against the Blue Jays left-hander Jay Happ. Jay makes his 26th and final start of 2014, looking to continue a strong finish this season. This is his fourth start this year against the Euros. He's had a really nice finishing kick, I think, to his year, completing at least six innings in six consecutive starts. First pitch fastball knocked down by Valencia. And he throws him out. Good play by Danny Valencia. Casilla hit it hard, but right to the third baseman. Danny Valencia was in protecting against the bunt from Cassia, so you can see he's right on the carpet. Knocks this ball down, and because it was hit so hard, he's got plenty of time to pick it up out of the glove and make the throw across the infield, one down. And that'll get your heart started early afternoon on a Saturday. So how's the game going? Wham! <laughs> <laughs> One down here is Steve Pierce. We mentioned Pierce with that great average against fastballs. He's at 357 against fastballs this season. That is the sixth best in the major leagues. And Jay Happ is a fastball pitcher. Yeah, this should be a very nice competing these two. Happ has been so good this year with that fastball. It's a pitch that he has up the usage of this year. And he has been living off of it, and he's been putting it in a good spot. Ball on a strike to Pierce. There's a fastball in a good spot. Collison behind second. Nice dig by Mayberry at first. Two ground ball outs. Take a look at the defense for the Blue Jays. It's Kevin Pillard, Dalton Pompey in center, and Jose Bautista in right field. Valencia already making a nice play today. Reyes and Collison up the middle. John Mayberry Jr. makes his third start at first base. And Deanna Navarro, 102 starts this season. He's done a good job. Kevin Pillar is one of the outfielders that we're going to watch this afternoon. He's made a couple of, uh, he's had a couple of outfield assists. Today he was named the Webster Award winner as the most valuable player in Buffalo, the AAA. And he's looked awfully good in the outfield. you got to figure that he is in the mix at some point for next year. Two outs, Adam Jones back in the lineup. He had... Last night off, there's another fastball from him. Jones just a 161 hitter over his last eight games. It's this one on the ground. Tallis said position perfectly. How about three ground ball outs for Jay Happ to start the game? Just six pitches. Very efficient Happ. Take a look at the lineup for John Gibbons. Jose Reyes 
hit 340 over his last 12 games. Jose Bautista in that two spot. And Bautista is back in right field. Over his last six games, he's hit nearly 500. He's got a double, a couple of home runs, and three RBIs as he's in tough against a guy he has hit well in the past. And how about Danny Valencia? He's the cleanup hitter. Yeah, he is 4 for 13 against Wei Yin Chen, the Orioles starter. This afternoon is a tune up for Wei Yin Chen. He is scheduled to pitch game two of the divisional series next Friday for the Baltimore Orioles. Chen has split a couple of starts against the Blue Jays this year. He lost to the Jays August the 6th. Five innings pitched, four and runs in that game, and then was the winning pitcher last time out versus the Jays when they were in Baltimore. September the 15th, he won that game 5 to 2. The Orioles take a lot of pride in their defense, and today in the outfit is Delman Young, Bo Glover, Adam Jones in center, Steve Pierce is in right. Alexa Garcia making his first start at third base. J.J. Hardy back at shortstop. Jonathan Scope and Christian Walker. We saw him make his major league debut in Baltimore. Caleb Joseph has done a terrific job filling in for the injured Matt Wieters this year. And there's Alexi Casilla selected from Norfolk today. Their Triple A team, 56 games in Triple A this year, 34 at second, 21 at shortstop, eight seasons in the major leagues for Casilla. Played most of the time with the Minnesota Twins. First pitch from Chen is outside the Reyes. Reyes, we mentioned over his last 12 games, has hit 340. A couple of doubles, three RBIs, and he scored eight runs. Wei Yin Chen, what a year he's had. 16 and 5 for the 356 earned run average. This is his 31st start of the season. Interesting splits for Chen. He is 8 and 2 at home, 8 and 3 away. You know, nothing real fancy from Wei and Chen when he's on the mound. He's going to challenge you with that fastball. He's got the slider, the curve, and the changeup. Nothing that really jumps off the page at you when you watch him pitch. He just throws a lot of strikes. Doesn't get hurt by the base on balls. Chen is Taiwanese, but he has pitched in Japan. He started out in Japan in 2005 pitching for the Chinichi Dragons. Had Tommy John surgery, missed all of the seventh season. That ball is trouble down the right side. If it stays fair, it is a foul ball. Just barely foul down in that right field corner. That would have been two, maybe three for Reyes. We mentioned Chen. Only Chen Ming Wong of the formerly of the Yankees. He actually pitched for the Blue Jays for a bit. Jim Ming Wong is the all time win leader for the Taiwanese pitchers. He has 62 wins. Wei Yin Chen has 35. Full count to Reyes. Popped up right side of the infield. Second baseman Jonathan Scope makes the catch. Wei Yin Chen doesn't do anything that will overwhelm you, but all of his pitches are very effective. And they work very well together. Fastball, there are the averages against that. His slider is decent. Changeup, he's been knocked around with that changeup this season, and he'll mix in a curveball, too. He's been roughed up by the Blue Jays this year. His ERA against the Blue Jays over five. Everybody else is three and a half. They have really hammered his changeup this year. Jose Bautista, a terrific season. He's looking to become just the second player in club history to hit 25 doubles, 35 homers, score 100, drive in 100, get 100 walks, and have an on base percentage of 400. Carlos Delgado had to be in there somewhere, didn't he? Yeah, he is the other player. He did that in 2000. The final piece to that formula more walks than strikeouts. A terrific offensive season for Delgado. Delgado is one of three major leaguers that has an on base percentage over 400. Carlos Delgado put up that great season in 2000. Jose Bautista's on base percentage currently at 407. That is third best in the majors. He had that big streak stopped in last night's ball game. 28 consecutive games where he was has reached base. That was stopped last night against the Orioles. 
And over those 28 games, he had 11 home runs. Chen stepped off. He didn't like that pitch. Caleb Joseph, his catcher. Tell you what, right now, Jose looks very hitterish at the plate, doesn't he? Looks like he's ready to do some damage. He is called out. Caught looking at strike three. That's two down. First strike out of the afternoon for Chen. Again, nothing real fancy from Wei and Shen. Not a blazing fastball, but he puts it in a good spot. I think Jose was looking for something off speed. But that one was right there for the second out. Edwin Encarnacion. Edwin looking for a couple of RBIs. He's got two games left to reach the 100 RBI plateau. That would give him three consecutive seasons of driving in a hundred. Bautista and Encarnacion are two of the best power hitters the franchise has ever seen. And if Edwin can drive in two more runs, he'll become just the third Blue Jay to post three or more straight seasons of 100 RBIs. Of course, Dark Carlos Delgado did it six times, and Joe Carter had four straight 100 RBI seasons. Tell you what a duel. Trying to pitch through those two guys. We were talking about it yesterday. When the game starts, it's great to have them in their lineup. Two and two, two outs. We're in the bottom of the first. Later start than normal here at Rogers Center. Most of the time, these Saturday games or one o'clock games. This one starts just after four. Hit hard. J.J. Hardy, the Gold Glover at short, takes his time. Three up, three down for Chin. Played an inning here at Rogers Center on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. It's a scoreless game. of the Toronto Blue Jays. Ben Nicholson Smith has an article. The headline is Young Jays Show Glimpses of Promising Future. Indeed, we saw that last night dramatically on display with Dalton Pompey and his three extra base hit tonight. Anthony Ghost, a couple of fine plays in the outfield. How about Marcus Stroman and Drew Hutchison putting on a display from the mound? Yeah, that's just a couple of them. They brought him up here in September, these young kids. We were surprised a little bit when we saw some of the names. Now we're going to come up for September. The Blue Jays said they're going to play them, and they have indeed played them in September. Get their feet wet at the major league level. Nelson Cruz, the DH. Boy, what an investment he was for the Orioles. He was a free agent. He was signed late in the offseason. And he has delivered a one-year contract. He'll be a free agent once again. 
but he did his part of the deal. He delivered 40 home runs, 108 RBIs. Outstanding, and I mean outstanding low ball hitter. You look at the numbers on where the pitches are to Nelson Cruz and where he hits them against lefties. He hits them also, but the ball's down. He crushes it. So you can see Jay Happ starting to work up in the strike zone to Cruz. Up and away. Two and two to Nelson Cruz. Boy, he's a good off speed hitter, too. He loves yep. that off speed pitch. And we have seen him go the other way with two strikes. There's a fly ball into center. Pompey back. He's on the track at the wall. It's off his glove and off the wall. Cruz is rounding second. He's headed for third. Here's the throw from Pompey. And Reyes will flip it back to the infield. Nelson Cruz with his second triple of the season off the glove of Dalton Pompey in deep center field. Well, if he would have caught that one, then we would have said Devon White is back playing for the Blue Jays. This ball is hit hard by Cruz to dead center field. Pompey goes back and watch where it hits his glove and then ricochets away from both he and Kevin Pillar. Off the fence, then off of his elbow, right along the wall, away from the outfielders, and that's why Cruz at that third base. That is so similar to Devon White's catch in the World Series. That was unbelievable. Of course, Dalton didn't catch it. There's a base hit off the bat of Delman Young on the first pitch, and he drives in the first run of the game. Nelson Cruz comes in to score. So Delman Young. He drove in the first run of the game last night with a first inning single to right. Same type of pitch. He hit it in the same spot. It was a fastball away last night. He hit it into the right field, and he does the same thing here off of Jay Happ. Fastball away, and he shoots at the right field for his 30th RBI of the season. J.J. Hardy back in the lineup today. Buck Showalter gave Hardy, Jones, Cruz, and Pierce the day off last night. They didn't arrive until 4 in the morning on Friday. Now they got the night off. Pat, you would think these guys headed to the postseason want to play right up to the end of the season, get a couple of bats at a minimum. But they play every day, and I agree with what Buck Showalter has been doing over the last week or so. He gave Nick Markakis five days off from playing every day. He got drilled when we were there. Aaron Loop hit him with a ball. He gave him five days off to recoup over, over that one. He, Adam Jones plays every single day, every inning of every game. So you give them a couple of days off, get them off the turf, and just get them ready for the postseason. Now, as a player, you want to play the, the, the last game or the second to last game and get that timing down. Keep it. They are not going to play until Thursday. And by baseball standards, that's like two weeks off. Mm -hmm. You play every day, basically. And when you hang around that long, you have a tendency to get antsy. One and two. They've Hardy got, fouls it off the glove. They've got workouts scheduled on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday in Baltimore. So they'll stay ready that way, get a lot of ground balls and a lot of batting practice. They will probably go over some fundamentals and have some team meetings about the team that they're going to be facing. And they still don't know the team that they're going to be facing. Hardy hits it on the ground. This should be too. Thomas and Torres back to Mayberry. It is a 4-6-3 double play. Well, Jay Happ has had a terrific second half of the season. He has really pitched well, and it's because of his grown confidence in that fastball. I believe that also. He shaved about a run and a half off his earned run average in the second half of this season. His whip has gone down to 1-1 one, one in the second half from one and a half. Everything has been much better because his fastball has been better, and he's starting to spin a breaking ball a lot better. I was looking at some of the numbers from Happ, and last year he was a fly ball pitcher. He's dropped that arm angle down. He's throwing more two seamers and getting more, more ground balls. So the fly ball rate has gone down and his ground ball rate has gone up, which is important in this ballpark. Well, I think, too, that because Jay has really learned the value of using that fastball, he's just making better pitches down in his own. Christian Walker, the rookie. Which I saw him make his major league debut in Baltimore. 
Hits it hard, backhanded by Valencia. <laughs> Orioles are done in their half of the set. They score a run on two hits. Delman Young with the RBI single. Valencia will start things off when we come back. He was picked up mid-season because of a various amount of injuries, mostly to Brent Laurie. But when you look at the starters at third base this season, this is an area of concern for the Blue Jays. I don't think that's how the Blue Jays threw it up last offseason when they were going into this year. Who was going to play third base? It was going to be Brent Laurie, and he was probably scheduled to play 150 games, but that wasn't so. He was injured again, so Juan Francisco was the winner this year. The most games started at third base for the Blue Jays this season. Francisco, we've seen Danny Valencia, Mononori has started a few games. Steve Tollison next year going into uh, the offseason. You got to figure Brett Laurie's going to be the third baseman, but there has to be some contingency plans if he gets hurt again. They have also had seven different starters at second base. And Mononori Kawasaki is the leader in games that started with 49. So those have been two problem areas for the Blue Jays. Valencia jumps back from an inside here from William Chen. Danny four for 13 against Chen. Got a double and three RBIs against the Orioles lefty. Broken bat, a little dribble or two short. Hardy takes his time on down. We are in the final weekend of the season and we just want to acknowledge some of the people that help us put on this great TV show every day. Of course, Natasha and Amanda really run the pitch effects and they're the ones that put up that great graphic to give you the perspective of the strike zone and give you an idea how pitchers are trying to work the hitters during the course of the season. So we want to thank them for their great work. We have a couple of great predict production assistants in Luke Clare and Trevor Singer. They help us out all season long, making sure we have all the right information and right messages to pass along to you, great audience. We have Bug Operator puts up all the numbers that you look at during the course of the game. Great out of end and Grace I am. So thank you for your great efforts. Gatter Navarro takes one upstairs. It's a ball and a strike to the Blue Jays catcher. On days like this, it's very challenging for the video men. They have to adjust the irises on the camera and make sure you can see the pictures and got shade and sunshine to deal with. They're constantly dialing in their equipment. Chris Mitchell, Victor Brook, James Mead, and John Robitaille. We want to thank you for everything that you do every single day. It is quite an operation. It takes a lot of people to be well coordinated, and we want to 
acknowledge all of their great work. It's a long season. We're just the last link. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're a very small connection. That's yeah, for sure. The, the last one that everybody sees. Breaking ball and Navarro strikes out. Joseph goes to first to complete the strikeout. Way in Chen, we mentioned his 16 and 5 record, and he's really finishing up strong over his last 11 starts. Great numbers for Chen as he gets ready for the playoffs. A 6 and 2, 255 earned run average over his last 11 starts. He's just throwing strikes and making the batters try and hit their way on. Good numbers for him all the way around. When you look into the numbers a little closer, he's a fly ball pitcher. And the Blue Jays are a fly ball bunch offensively. So you would think that he would give up the home run. And he's given up his share. But the Blue Jays haven't had a lot of success home run wise against them. Bautista had a home run against him on August 6th, the two run homer. It was in the second inning, gave the Blue Jays a 4 1 lead. Mayberry fouls it out of play. In his start in 2012, Wei Chen gave up two home runs. He gave up a home run to Moises Sierra and a two run home run to Encarnacion. Well, only three home runs he's allowed to the Blue Jays, and this is his fourth career start. High fly ball to right. Pierce broke back. Now he's coming in. Mayberry's retired. Three up, three down. Chen has reset down six straight to start the game. Blue Jays on Sportsnet, brought to you by the all-new 2015 Honda Fit. Fit your lifestyle, fit your fun, fit whatever. And by Home Hardware, homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. It is the final Junior Jays Saturday of the season. Lots of kids in attendance, and Junior Jays Saturday is always very popular with the crowd. Kids get to run the bases after the game. And you couldn't ask for a better day. My goodness, it's warmed up beautifully. Caleb Joseph. Fine young catcher getting an opportunity to play this season because of the injury to Matt Wheaters. And boy, has he made the most of it. Hit hard right to Reyes, the shortstop. Another ground ball out for Jay Happ. Jay Happ has pitched very well at home, a six and five record with a 318 earned run average. But if you look at his last eight home starts, he's really stepped it up a notch. You know the one I love the most is that bottom one right there. 15 pitches per inning for Happ tells me that he is attacking the strike zone. He's making him put the ball in play, and again, he's getting more ground ball outs this year than he has at any time in his career. More ground ball outs, fewer fly ball outs, and I think you have to do that if you're going to pitch. Number one in this ballpark, 
and in the American League East. Isn't it interesting how pitchers learn later on in their career that contact is a good thing? Oftentimes, when you start out, you want to miss the bats. Yeah, you don't want to. Uh, you see a lot of young pitchers come into the league, and they, they feel like they have to be perfect. They have to paint, put the ball on the outside part of the plate, whatever. But as they get a little bit older and a little bit more mature, they just pound down in that strike zone, and good things happen. Yeah, and it's really interesting, especially in this ballpark, because the ball carries so well here. You have to really kind of lean towards the guys and keep it on the ground. Oh, there's good breaking ball. Scope strikes out, two down here in the third, and that's the first strikeout for Jay Happ. That's one of the few breaking balls we've seen so far, and he used it in perfect spot. Since the All Star break against that off speed pitch, batters have hit 238 with pitches like this. He has been spinning a good curveball. That one right under the bat. That's where you want to throw it to the right handed batter with two strikes. That's called a shoot top type of curveball, where you throw it to that back leg. And he gets his first strikeout of the afternoon. Alexei Casillas is a switch hitter batting right handed against Jay Hamm. He had a hot shot to the third baseman, grounded out in his first at bat. Ball in the strike. Fastball missed outside. Jake. In the second half of the season after the All Star break, has pitched to a 362 earned run average. He knocked a run and a half off of his earned run average. There's a high breaking ball. One hop to Tallison. Another good inning for JF. Three up, three down. Warriors have a 1 0 lead when we come back. Dalton Pompey will get things started. A lot of these jerseys being made up on the fly. Dalton Pompey wasn't with the team until September, and all of a sudden his jerseys become one of the most hotly sought after jerseys in the Jays shop. And they're putting together a lot of these jerseys. They'll make them right on the scene for you. So if you want a Dalton Pompey jersey, you might have to wait a few minutes while they make it because they have sold out quickly. Yeah, you can't keep it on the shelves from what we hear. Our cameraman came in here, Terry, saying that they can't keep on the shelves. They're sold out already. They're lined up to get them. And why not? This guy has really fascinated, I think, the fans here in the month of September. Plus, a lot of the people that are buying those jerseys may have gone to high school with them. <laughs> he grew up in Mississauga. Uh, he is a hometown fella. Dalton's mother Val was on the pregame show with Jamie Campbell and suggested that Dalton used to come here to Rogers Center to get some autographs himself. So that's why he's so accommodating when people ask him for his autograph. He has been there. 
on the other side of the fence. I tell you what, he is swinging the bat from both sides of the plate. Of course, he had a three extra base hit game yesterday. And that's one of the rarities for a Blue Jay player under the age of 22. He's only the third player in franchise history that's done that. Floyd Mosby was the first to accomplish that way back in 1981. There he shows Bunt and Bunt's right through it. Mosby had three doubles against the Angels in September of 1981 out in Anaheim. The second 21 year old to have three extra base hits in a game, Felipe Lopez did in September of 2001. He had a triple and two home runs against the Yankees. Off speed pitch, that's going to reach the seats. And of course, Dalton Pompey yesterday had two triples and a double. Only three players under the age of 22 in franchise history have had three extra base hits in a single game. And only the third rookie to accomplish that feat a couple of triples in one ball game. One and two. He goes around. Pompey strikes out. That's the first out. Of the bottom of the third. Now batting number 11, Kevin Pillar. It's Junior Jays Saturday, presented by Boston Pizza. And as you can hear, the Junior Jays get to announce the lineups today. Just one of the many fun activities taking place on Junior Jays Saturday, all presented by Boston Pizza. Nice job by that young man. Introducing Kevin Pillar. Hit pass Casilla in the left field. Pillar makes an aggressive turnaround first. He'll stop there for the one out single. That's the first base runner for the Blue Jays against Wei Yin Chen. Pillar got a first pitch in this at bat and rips it by Casilla, the third baseman, right underneath his glove. The Orioles have used seven third basemen now this season. Manny Machado. Is out for the rest of the season with an injury, so Casilla gets his shot. Kevin Pillar is not waiting around at all. First pitch hitting, just like his home run the other day. Kevin Pillar earlier today was given his H. Howard Webster Award for the season. He was named the most valuable player at AAA Buffalo. Each year, the Blue Jays award their minor league players of the year at the various levels. The R. Howard Webster Award. Pilar won it at AAA. Had an 18 game hit streak at AAA. He was first in doubles in the International League and hit 323. That was third in the league. Steve Thomason. 2 0 count. Thomason in the ninth spot. He has a couple of hits against Wei Yin Chen. Thomason's playing time has been limited lately, but boy, he's made the most of his limited at bats. He's seven for his last 14 over the span of 10 games. Playing against left handers mainly, and if you look at the splits for. For Tolly there, his last 10 games, 7 for 14, a couple of RBIs, a couple of runs scored. He's hit 318 versus the left handers, that's 123 versus the right handers. So Blue Jays have not seen a lot of left handed starters over the last week or so, 10 days. But when the lefty comes in, he's ready to swing that bat. Bouncing ball pass, Casilla down the left field line. Pilar is headed for third. He's being waved home. Delman Young's throw is cut off. Here's the return to the plate. Safe. Collison will stop and stay in second. The Blue Jays have tied it. Collison with the RBI double. I love the aggressive nature that we have seen from Louis Rivera, the third base coach of the Blue Jays, on this homestand, challenging the opposition, daring them to throw out the Blue Jay runners. This ball gets by Cassia down into the, the corner in left field, and Pilar 
you got to think when you're on first base and you see an extra base hit, you have to think about scoring. You're going to run as hard as you can until that third base coach stops you. He was running hard as soon as it was hit. Louis sent him home. The Blue Jays have a run. I think that's being a great team player when you're at first base thinking about scoring for your teammate who hits an extra base hit. Reyes fair ball. That'll drive in another run. Tollison's around third. He's going to score. Reyes with an RBI double. The Jays have taken the lead. Well, they pick something up now on Wei and Chen. That is three straight bullets hit by the Blue Jays. Pilar with a single, Tollison with a double, and then Reyes. He's not waiting around at all. First pitch, four seamer right there. And Jose is going to rip it down into the corner. Back to back double. Reyes is 50th RBI, and the Blue Jays now take the lead. Tollison can trot in with the second run. Reyes had 37 RBIs last year in that injury plague season. He has 50 now. Bautista's all over that pitch. He rips it just foul. Well, you're right. All of a sudden, the Blue Jays are zeroed in on Wei In Chen. The shadows are gone. <laughs> they might be able to see the ball now. Picking on Alexi Casilla, the third baseman this afternoon of the Orioles. One out, Reyes at second base. Bouncing ball to short. J.J. Hardy throws out Bautista. Two down. Fans obviously want to remind you that only a few days away, the start of the NHL on Sportsnet. 11 days, 2 hours, 11 minutes, just around the corner. It'll all start October 8th, and Sportsnet will have all the action for you. They've done a great job of bringing back some of the great hockey announcers in the game. Paul Romanek is back on staff. Jim Yusuf, Peg Simpson will host Hockey Night in Canada. A terrific core of announcers all across the country. That went in Carnacion. Chance to drive in a run here with two outs. Edwin has 98 ribbies and he's hitting 17 of his last 21 games. Pops this one up. Looked like an off speed pitch. Jonathan Scope backing up into the outfield. Makes the catch. The inning is over, but the Blue Jays scored a pair. Runs on three hits. Collison and Reyes with the RBIs.
City Royals, who have clinched a berth in the postseason, and they will play in the AL wildcard game. The Royals have not been to the postseason since the World Series of 1985 when they were the world champions, and it's been a long drought for Kansas City. Yeah, it certainly has the longest in baseball. You know what? That reminded me of all the celebrations that the Kansas City Royals used to do, so we sent our staff to look for a picture of that, and guess who we found out? That's Buck Martinez. Young Buck in 1976 celebrating in the locker room in Kansas City when they won their uh, division. Yeah, it was the first division championship at Mark Littell, the relief pitcher. And great time, obviously. Uh, organization, uh, a young organization, expansion team in 69, but they have uh, fallen upon hard times recently and they are back into the postseason. One thing I noticed about that picture, there was no. Uh, cellophane screens in front of the locker rooms. You guys were just partying. They didn't have time, I guess, to put that up, right? Nobody ever thought about that. We didn't have any ski goggles either. <laughs> ski goggles. How about the ski goggles and the camera attached to yeah. it? I, I saw that one this year. That's something else, isn't it? <laughs> They've taken celebrations to the next level, that's for sure. Steve Pierce, the right fielder, hammers this ball down the left field line. That's going to go up against the wall. Pilar plays it off the wall. Here's his throw to second. It is late and over the second baseman. You know, Buck, that wasn't the only picture our staff found. Now they went back a little bit further and look at this one. <laughs> Who is this guy? Now that is a long time ago. <laughs> that's our own Buck Martinez. What is that, circa 1969-70? Yeah, that's 69, I think. That's the Royals... In 1969, my first year with that expansion team at my, oh, my, oh, miles. Are those uh, uniforms there? They have the zipper up there? No. One of those old ones? <laughs> no. Those are old-fashioned wool <laughs> unis. That was the 69 expansion year. Wow, that, that picture was so old. That was before the designated hitter. <laughs> That's the old Johnny Carson. How old was it? <laughs> it was so old. <laughs> Wow, did they have color film back then? No, it was all okay. black and white. You know, the guy had the little powder in the thing. They lit the flash and all that. <laughs> <sighs> Adam Jones, the center fielder. He ground up the second his first time. Huh? Adam Jones, look at that swing. Got an all-star gold glover in this game one day from the end of the season. He's still trying to hit the ball to the right side to move the runner up. Surprised a little bit by this fastball from Jay Happ. It looked like it was off the plate. And Adam Jones is trying to shoot the ball the other way. Still early enough in the game against the left-hander. you got to figure that you're going to try and drive him in here. Nobody out runner in scoring position. Breaking ball taken inside. Two and one. Jay Happ trying to even his record at 11 and 11. This is his 26th start of the season. Made his first three appearances for the Jays this year out of the bullpen. Jones drives this ball to the alley and right. Bautista makes the catch and Pierce. He couldn't advance. Bautista, terrific outfit, of course. He got over to the alley and made the catch. Yeah, Pierce just wasn't sure if that ball was going to be caught by Bautista or not, so a little indecision out there. So he cannot tag out. The ball's hit hard by Jones, and I think it surprises Bautista in the outfield as he reaches up to make that catch. And the runner cannot advance. Well, the outfield play by the Blue Jays on this homestand has been outstanding. Boy, it sure has been outstanding. It's Really played well with the youngsters putting on a show. Bautista, he's a gold glove caliber outfielder every year. This might be the year for Bautista. Win the gold glove. I agree. Nick Marcakis has had an outstanding season also in the outfield. He hasn't committed an error. He has 11 outfield assists. Jose has 12 outfield assists. And he has made plays like that last one over and over this year. Uh, that's the challenge he has to deal with. You can see by his shadow, he's looking directly into that sun. Anything to his right, he's got to look right into that sun. Hard hit ball. Tollison makes a nice play. Throws out through. Steve Tollison saved a run for Jay Happ.
Jays on Sportsnet, brought to you by the all-new 2015 Honda Fit. Fit your lifestyle, fit your fun, fit whatever. Steve Dollison playing some second base. It's all about the positioning. You can see him up the middle. And as a second baseman, you want to stay low on that ball. It makes a nice play to get the second out. Dermon Young drove in the Orioles run with a single to right field. Well, they're trying to crowd him with that fastball now, and Hap jumps ahead. Oh, and two. First one was away from Delvin Young, and he shot it in the right field for an RBI single. Now it looks like those first two pitches, they're trying to pound him in. He might go up with this one here. Fastball up. The call missed upstairs, and Young wouldn't swing at it. Give you an idea about the Gold Glove winners last year. Victor Reno, Alex Gordon, and Adam Jones won the Gold Gloves. The year before, it was Josh Reddick joining Alex Gordon and Jones. So, Victor Reno, he's out of the picture this season. Jones has had another terrific year. Mike Trout's got to be in there somewhere, doesn't he? Don't they uh, do it by position now? Don't they do it by right fielders and center fielders and left fielders? In the past, I know it was I mean, you could, three center fielders could have won it. Yeah. But I think they have it now broken down by position. So Bautista will be up against all the other right fielders in the American League. Yeah, you're right. It was Gordon in center. Or excuse me, Gordon in left, Jones in center, Victor Eno in right last year. And then Gordon in left, Jones in center, mm -hmm. Reddick in right the previous year in 2012. They changed that a couple of years ago. Did you see the, the count catch by Mike Trout last night yeah, up over his head? He wasn't even looking at it, just went in his glove. Kendris Morales wasn't very happy about it. <laughs> it. Looked like he had a ball over Trout's head, and Trout ran to his left and then reached back over behind his head and really never even saw it, but caught it. Well, you would think that he's going to be in the equation yeah. in center field. He and Adam Jones, you would think. Alex Gordon's going to be in the discussion in left field, of course, and Bautista's got to be there in right. That would be a wonderful topper to a terrific season for Jose Bautista. Yeah, everybody talks about his offense, and he's had a great year offensively. Defensively, he's had just his final year, I think. Who else can say they've thrown a runner out at first base? In back-to-back -back games. Breaking ball and half strikes out Delman Young. The Orioles get a leadoff double. They lead in the third. They'll go to the bottom of the fourth. Blue Jays lead it two to one. State and it'll take place tomorrow. The final game of the season. The Blue Jays and Orioles will wrap up the season 
And the game starts at 107. First 20,000 fans will receive a Blue Jays warm winter hat. Call the Jays at 416 341 1234. Or log online at bluejays.com to get your tickets. The final game of the season. The Blue Jays will give away that beautiful warm winter hat, and it's all presented by Allstate. Well, that will come in handy this winter. Doesn't feel like it today, that's for sure. It is a beautiful day. And you can see the sun shining brightly headed toward the west. And late afternoon start. Boy, it's a comfortable day and nice crowd. Danny Valencia will lead things off for the Jays. Valencia grounded out to third his first time. Huh? Blue Jays lead it two to one. The Jays won last night four to two. Drew Hutchinson, a winner over Chris Tillman. Marcus Stroman picked up an old fashioned save. He went four innings. Yeah, <laughs> meaning more than just one <laughs> inning, right? Old fashioned, went through the lineup. One full turn. First big league save for Marcus. I had a nice conversation with Marcus before the game today and asked him to talk about what his impressions were of his first full season. Then I asked him what uh, what he did to adjust to the hitters and he said probably the biggest thing was the development of his two seam fastball. He said he'd never had a two seamer before in the past and it just came by accident. He was working with grips on it. Down in the bullpen, and all of a sudden found one that worked. He spins it right off his middle finger, and that really took him to the next level. That's a high fly ball down the left side. That's going to be well back out of play. Yeah, and you know what? With everything that went on with Marcus in the Baltimore series, where he with that pitch and was suspended, I think he's grown from that. He reached out to Caleb Joseph, who was at the plate when that pitch sailed away from Stroman. Joseph has put it behind him. Buck Showalter has put it behind him, and they're moving on, and so has Marcus Stroman. Valencia takes one outside. Lead off walk. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Boy, how about that? What a way to end the season. Yes. Had a walk-off grand slam in that ball game, and now the situation has been resolved as the Pirates will have to settle for the playoff berth. They can't win the National League Central. Cardinals came back last night, and Arizona tied them up 6-6, and the Cardinals won it in the 10th. St. Louis has had another terrific season. A lot of good ball players on that team as well. They're starting to put it together like they seem to every year about this time. Heading into the playoffs. There's a base hit for Navarro. Delman Young over to play it on a couple of hops. Valencia will stop at second. So lead off walk and now a single for Navarro. Well, Blue Jays are starting to jump on that fastball from Way and Chen. This one is up. How about Navarro using his hands there to get the barrel above the baseball? Rip that ball into left field. Starting to pick up the spin of that fastball and starting to get on it now. John Mayberry Jr. popped out to right field his first time up. Mayberry. Since coming to the Blue Jays, has hit 263, 5 for 19, with four extra base hits. He came at a time when the Blue Jays weren't seeing many left handed pitchers. So he had to wait quite a while to get his first start. Yeah, that one, uh, he has come in and pinched hit, and he has done a few things offensively, I think, for the Blue Jays to say, you know what, this guy can be a valuable guy for our team. As interesting, obviously, he has filled the role of a platoon player playing against lefty pitching. 
John is 30 years old. He turned 31 in December. He started out his big league career with the Phillies. 25 years old, he came up with the Phillies in 2009 and got in 39 games. Hit four home runs and just 57 at bats. For his career, he's a 242 hitter over six seasons. Breaking ball upstairs. Two balls and two strikes. First two reach here in the fourth against Wei Yin Chen. This is the third season for Chen with the Orioles. Pop up over near the Orioles. Dunya. Baseball is huge in Taiwan. Of course, Chen Meng Wong, when he pitched for the Yankees in 2006 and 2007, had 19 win seasons in back to back years. And he was the toast of the town throughout Taiwan. Wei and Chen has the same type of impact. He has actually appeared on the cover of the Esquire magazine in Taiwan. This is popped up and playable on the infield. Infield fly rule is in effect. Hardy makes the catch. One down. Dalton Pompey will come to the plate, and last night he put on quite a show here at Manchester Center. Well, whenever you hit a triple, I think you can show off your baseball skills, your hitting skills, so you have a lots, of, lots of power, line drive into the gap, and then obviously your speed skills. This is his speed, his first triple that. Feet first slide into third base, uh, showing off the skills. And in baseball, there's nothing prettier than watching a guy round the bases for a triple. Played in Kansas City, got to watch Willie Wilson and both he and Bo Jackson when they would hit triples. It was the same thing. Just really exciting to watch the athletic skills come out. Yeah, Willie Wilson, probably the best going from home to third I've ever seen. Yeah. Long strides and looked like he was running right behind the mound. <laughs> Dalton Pompey struck out in the third. High fly ball into center. Jones is there. Valencia will hold at second. So now there are two down after a promising start to this. Event. Runners remain at first and second. Kevin Pilar singled and scored. Scored the first Blue Jay run in the third. Pilar was also named to the International League postseason All Star team. Even though he was back and forth a couple of different times between Toronto and Buffalo. Some of the other Webster Award winners, John Birdie, second baseman at double A. He won his second consecutive Webster Award. He won previous season with Dunedin in 2013. Birdie, we mentioned he is a infielder and second baseman. Had 40 stolen bases this year in Double A. Showed some pop. Looked at some of his numbers. A lot of young kids on that list. Dwight Smith Jr., just 21 years old. He was the Webster Award winner for Dunedin in the Florida State League. He was the most consistent producer offensively for the Dunedin Blue Jays. Hit 284. Had a 363 on base percentage. Hit 12 home runs. Drove in 60 and stole 15 bases. Nice numbers across the board. Mitch Ney in Lansing was the winner for the Lansing Lugnuts. He's too, just 21 years old. Ney is a third baseman. 
There's a fly ball down the left side that is hooking toward the seats and will reach out of play. Mitch Nay. Chandler, Arizona. He's 21 years old. He's a third baseman. He's 6'3 and weighs 225. Big, strong power hitter. Big boy. He was a high draft pick also. And 135 hits this summer. That was second in the minor league system for the Blue Jays. 2-2. Two -two. This is popped up and playable. Right side of the infield. Scope going out. Pierce calls him off the right field and makes the catch. They played four innings at Rogers Center. Blue Jays have a 2 1 lead. Now it's time for Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn. The green chairs in the TD Comfort Zone. Our guest of TD, final Saturday of the season, and you have walked out to be sitting in those great seats. And how about that familiar face over in the Jays Care Community Clubhouse? Those are folks from the Pinball Clemens Foundation, and there's Pinball right in the middle of it. And you, wouldn't you know it, Pinball has a glory jersey on, and you know what other ties Pinball has to the Blue Jays? He grew up in Dunedin, Florida. Well, Pinball Clemens is an icon around the community and in Ontario. And hello, Pinball. <laughs> Somebody told him he was just on television. We move to the fifth. Jay Happ has a 2 1 lead. JJ Hardy hit into a double play his first time up. Off the end of the mat. Tomlinson's been busy at second. One down. Lots of ground balls from Jay Happ. We were talking last time uh, he was pitching that his fastball percentage, he's got the third highest fastball percentage and the fourth highest percentage of strikeouts with that fastball. Today it looks like that ball's moving and he's getting a lot of ground ball outs. Happ has allowed one run on three hits. Only hit one ball in the air for an out this afternoon. We spoke to Jay Happ at Yankee Stadium last time the Blue Jays were playing New York, and we asked him about his season. He was really pleased with the way he's finishing up and feels like his best years are ahead of him. I yeah. have to agree. Yeah, I, I do too. 30 years old. He's I think he's learned a little something about himself. He said that the year didn't start very well for him. If you remember in spring training, he was hurt. It was a back issue, and he just could not command the ball. He was walking a lot of batters and started the season on the disabled list and then pitched out of the bullpen. And then once he got healthy and there was a spot in the rotation, he's grabbed it and he hasn't looked back. Well, you mentioned the difference in fly ball pitchers and ground ball pitchers. Dallas Keuchel is the best ground ball pitcher in baseball. 64% of the balls are on the ground. 
Tyson Ross, Padres, Felix Hernandez, 56.8. Alex Cobb of the Tampa Bay Rays, 56.7% ground balls. How about Sonny Gray? You wouldn't really think Sonny no. Gray to be a ground ball pitcher, but he is. The flip side of that, the fly ball pitchers, Chris Young. 23% ground ball, so he is constantly throwing pitches that end up in the air. Jake Odorisi of the Tampa Bay Rays is a 70% 70, 70 of the pitches he throws end up with five balls. So it's quite a contrast. Dallas Keiko, he throws ground balls almost every time he turns it loose. Yeah, it doesn't overpower you, but he puts it in a good spot. Last year, Jay Hap's fly ball percentage was 42%. This year, it's 35%. So it's gone down. Well, what you do when you throw a lot of ground balls, you engage your infield, that's for sure. They're always on their toes. And I think Jay Happ, you mentioned a great number, the 15.7 pitches in the second yeah. half of the season. I and mean, that keeps everybody in ball. Infielders don't have a, a chance to daydream or get bored. Walker strikes out high fastball, does the trick. Three strikeouts for a half. It's been a good month of September for the starting rotation. If you look at their starters whip throughout the month, it's been impressive. One through five. Mario Dickey, the leader of the pack, under one. That's outstanding. And Marcus Stroman, same way Mark Burley. I mean, every one of these starters have pounded the strike zone. They have given the Blue Jays a chance to win. They have been deep into the ball game. And it's a nice, I think, a nice problem to have for the Jays. That their starters, they're deep. They have some young ones. They have some more coming. They got a nice little problem now with their starters. Yeah, Pete Walker, the pitching coach, has done a terrific job of refining the young staff, uh, the younger guys especially. Yeah, it's a big question mark. Who's going to be here next year? Burley's going to be back. He's under contract. Or does Burley become somebody? Other teams desire. He's a veteran. He's consistent. He gives you 200 innings. Sean Nolan, the youngster, hasn't got a chance to pitch very much, but he's a starting candidate as well. Kendall Graveman for me. He looks good right in the bullpen, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Rubber arm. You can pitch every night and you throw you a lot of ground balls. I got to figure out a way to get Aaron Sanchez into the rotation. You can say what you want to about closing, but I got to find out first if I don't have a premier front end Cy Young candidate starter. Yeah, yeah, front end of the rotation type of starter, but they need an opening. Right now, the five guys that they're throwing out there are doing the job. Yep, they sure are. Marcus Stroman, he's going to start next year. He's working the rest of the season out of the bullpen. We probably won't see him again after four innings of relief yesterday. But Marcus has had a great start. Daniel Norris said he was disappointed with his time in Toronto. He felt like he didn't really display the stuff that he was blessed with. He walked off the mound the other day after a good outing in my mind. Three and a third, a lot of bunt single and nothing more. He said he was really disappointed because that wasn't the stuff he pitched with all year long. Yeah, that's a good thing. A very know? good thing. A little burning desire that you can think about all winter long. But yeah, he he's a starter too. Three two two outs. Another foul back. Caleb Joseph, the catcher, putting up quite a fight against Jay Hatt. Jonathan Scope, the second baseman, would bat if Caleb Joseph can reach base. You know, they always say that you need eight to ten starters in the course of the year. Blue Jays have been fortunate. I think they've used nine all season long, but that's an exceptional year. Of the 3 2 pitch. Popped foul down the right side. That's going to hit on the warning track and bounce out of play. Yeah, they've used nine starters. One of them, though, was the start from Daniel Norris, and the three other ones. Or by Liam Hendricks, who came up from the minor leagues, made a start, and they'd send him back down. So basically, they've used seven starters all season long. They had McGowan in the rotation, and Jay Hep took his spot. Brandon Moore was in the rotation. He got injured, and Marcus Stroman took his spot. Hap 
loses that battle. That's the first walk he's allowed this afternoon. Well, the one thing that's impressive about the people we've been talking about, their age. Pompey's 21. Norris, the starter, is 21. Sanchez, just 22. Strowman's 23. Graveman's 23. Hutch just turned 24. Laurie's 24. And Ghost is 24. That's quite a combination of pitching and position players and eight man combination with talent, ability, and youth on their side. You know, one thing that's good, you and I don't have to make those decisions. <laughs> How do you fit them all in? But whenever you're going to become a good team, you have this kind of surplus. Not everybody has to pitch in the big leagues, of course. With the younger players, you have options. They can go back to the minor leagues. But now you give them that feel of being in the big leagues. You create a hunger. Yeah, put the carrot right in front of them. And they learn a little something in the month of September. They go home and they go, you know what? I think I can do this. All I need to do is one thing. Right back to Jay. After I end the inning, Scope is retired on the comeback. For four and a half, the Blue Jays have a 2 1 lead. Story begins its fourth season. Freak Show takes place in a carnival in the 1950s and premieres on FX Wednesday, October 8th at 10th. Take note, not available on Bell. Season is winding down for the Blue Jays. It's also winding down for a great sports event crew. And we want to continue to acknowledge some fine people that help us put the show on every single day down in the replay room. Headed up by Mike Sparks. He does a great job. Pat Denardis, Jeff Inchley, Andre Zelani, and Glenn Robinson. These are the fellas that give you all those great replays, and they're all baseball guys. So they all understand what's important, what's not, and they'll get it to you as quickly as possible. So that helps us explain what has gone on during the course of the game. They know what they're looking for, don't they? Because they're baseball guys. They sure do. The camera crew is terrific, and I'll put them up against anybody in baseball. And of course, we've had the pleasure of working with a lot of different TV people, but this cam camera crew is terrific. 2-1 ball game. Steve Collison had an RBI double his only time up. Hits it on the ground. J.J. Hardy to his left. Right on the money. One down. So the cameramen around the field, and they have been terrific. Martin Murphy down at low third. He's... Always part of the action, Mark. Congratulations on another fine year. Terry McAlpine, he is with us in the booth, and he does a terrific job. Terry is a huge baseball fan, and he loves coming to the ballpark every day, loves his job. Ted Perotta, Teddy's over at high first, and he gives us the great shots of the right-handed hitters and always looking out for the third baseman. He does a lot of great work. Teddy, thanks for another great year, pal. 
Tim Coughlin is in outfield and he's got one of those great cameras in center field that gives you the pitch, shows you where the contact is, and he does a great job. Thank you, Timmy. And these guys love coming to work just like Pat and I. They're always anxious to start the game. They know who's in town. They know what the strengths are of all the teams we will play. Brian Cooney, he gets a front row seat, that's for sure. Best seat in the house, Ryan. He's always passing <laughs> along information to the other managers, telling them what to do, when to put the hit and run on. Buck Schulter, I'm sure, listens to a lot of things Ryan suggests. It's awesome. Great crew and guys that are really good at what they do. That's a shot. Ryan will have that replay for you in just a second. Ball gets away at first, and Reyes is headed for second. Scope's throw is into the base runner. So Reyes reaches on the infield hit, goes to second on the air as the ball got away at first. Looked like he got hit not once but twice on this ball. Down the line, this was going to be two, but Casilla flags it down, and when he gets up to throw it across the diamond, it looked like it hit Reyes. Trickled into foul territory off the hop. No, right off the glove. There's Reyes avoids it. And now he's going to get hit as he goes into second base when Scope picks the ball up. Reyes is safe off the glove of Walker. Boy, Casilla has been busy down there at third base. He sure has. It's an infield hit and an error on the third baseman, Casilla. Bautista bounces it up the middle. J.J. Hardy to his left. Accurate throw. Reyes goes to third on the ground now. J.J. Hardy, he might not be sexy, but man, does he make all the plays. That's what you want from your shortstop. Make those routine plays every now and then. Throw in a, a star type of play. And he's one of the best at shortstop. Just make that play day in and day out. Edwin Encarnacion 0 for 2 so far this afternoon. First pitch strike from Wei in Chen. Off the glove of Chen, and Carnacion hustling up the line, JJ Hardy. Ball in the dirt. Ball is on the ground. A run comes in as Reyes scores. You know, we'll see how they're going to score that one. It was off the glove of the, the pitcher. And then Hardy had to change gears and go and get the ball. They're going to take a look at this one. But the ball was dropped by the first baseman. Watch the shortstop, Hardy. He goes to his left. And now he's got to come back to his right. He's going to glove it and make the throw. And it's a low throw. Right there, and then it just trickles out of the glove and smothered by Walker and it's called safe. The M by Jeff Gosney at first base sees that ball on the ground. And Walker just couldn't hold on to it. So it's an error on the first baseman. No RBI for Encarnacion. Reyes comes in to school. Danny Valencia. Let's see, has grounded out and walked. Blue Jays lead it now three to one. Now it's one and one to Valencia. Nobody's stirring in the Oriole bullpen as this is the final start of the season for Wei and Chen, but he won't pitch at least until Friday. Friday, and he's scheduled right now to pitch game two in their first round of the playoffs. Let's see, barely got out of the way of that inside pitch.
backhanded by Scope. He'll flip to second to end the inning. Blue Jays at a run. They've taken a 5-3-1 uh, lead through five innings. And here comes the home hardware cleanup crew. Brought to you by Natura. Home hardware's exclusive line of safe, environmentally friendly cleaning products. That live on your smartphone. Visit RogersAnyPlaceTV.com slash sports to get started. We are acknowledging our great crew here with the Sportsnet Television Network, and that is Stephanie Dunthorne, and she's the high her high third camera person. Okay, Stephanie, we're going to see how good you are. Give me a shot of Bautista. Close up. Go. <laughs> wow, not bad. Okay, Jay Happ is getting ready to pitch. I want you to break to him. Let me get a close up of Jay Happ. Nice. <laughs> See, I could be a director too. <laughs> Thanks, Stephanie. It's awesome. good to have you on the team. And Stephanie's been with us quite a while as well. Lexi Casilla loses that grip on that bat and goes all the way into the netting. Now, totally does his good deed for the day. Some of the other camera people that are involved, Todd Monroe, he's out in center field with us as well. And Todd's part of that great crew that gives us those shots. Todd, nice job again. And great to have you on the crew. He's also a pretty good golfer, I know that. Paul Ang is with us. And Paul does a great job in the verbal and keeping everything intact for us. There are a lot of moving parts of this show, and everybody is on board, and they all have to work together. And that is Paul's camera. That's the Robo camera that's behind the screen that scores all those runs at home plate, brings the runner around the third, and Paul has to use that joystick, and he's the only one that gets to play video game all day long. Bouncing ball to third, big hop for Danny Valencia. You know, and that was the shot while we were showing that camera. That was a shot of what you get to see. And that's still one of the neatest shots, I think, in baseball because you get the perception of everything. It's like you're standing at home plate looking out at the ball field. Look at that. That's very cool. Yeah, and now he can zoom in, make it a little tighter. He also does all of that from down inside the stadium near the truck. Great job. It's like you're standing in the box watching this pitch coming in. Mike Brown also helps out on the camera crew and all of those guys. They Guys and girls, excuse me, Stephanie, they all do a great job. And oh, by the way, Stephanie's a great cook. <laughs> she makes the best cinnamon rolls in the world. I told a bunch of crew they remind me of my mom's cinnamon rolls, and that's a good <laughs> thing. We're in the top of the sixth inning, one out. Steve Pierce has a double in two trips today. Two balls and a strike, one out. 
Blue Jays have a 3 1 lead. They have scored three runs on five hits. The Orioles have a run on three hits. Steve Pierce is a very interesting story and really reflects the personality of the Orioles. There's not a lot of real stars, not a lot of players with national recognition, but they all meld together to make a terrific team. Pierce is 31 years old. He, like Drew Hutchison, grew up in Lakeland, Florida, went to Lakeland High School. He is swinging the bat this year, swinging that pull. 21 home runs and just over 330 at bats this year. Well, there's a great fastball. Look at that group of fastballs down and away. And Jay Happ just strikes out Pierce with all those good fastballs. And there's something about Jay's fastball. At times, batters just cannot pick the ball up. It's on top of them so quickly. And on that pitch tracker, that final one down and away. It's high enough. Right at the corner. Fifth strike out of the afternoon. Natasha is working that pitch tracker today, and Steve Pierce saw way too many pitches down and away from Jay Happ. Two outs, Adam Jones, the center fielder. He's got 0 for 2. Pretty good pitch. Just connected for his 29th home run of the season. That was a no doubter. 22nd home run off of Jay Happ this season. And it's a one run ball game. Earls get that run back that the Blue Jays scored in the bottom of the fifth inning. It looked like Jay took a little something off of that pitch. It just registered 88 miles an hour. Like he was turning over a fastball or something like that, but Jones recognizes it very quickly and stayed back. And there's something about Adam Jones. He's in oral history. He's right up there with some of the, the best. Consecutive 25 or more home run seasons in oral history since 54 when they moved. Cal Ripken has six. Adam Jones with four. Eddie Murray had four. And Paul Merrill as well. But Adam Jones is among the franchise leader in that department. What a pickup. He was acquired from the Seattle Mariners. A terrific trade. We saw the starter last night. Chris Tillman came in that trade with Jones. So 3-2 Blue Jays lead. Fly ball to center. Pompey coming in a couple of steps. The inning is over. Adam Jones. It's a two out home run in the six. We'll go to the bottom of the six. Blue Jays still lead it.
for the Jays in the bottom of the six. This is his first season with the Blue Jays. He signed as a free agent, two-year contract. And if you look at the Blue Jays catchers, Combined in 2013, they hit under 200 at an OPS just over 500. And Navarro has had a career season offensively. Yeah, no question offensively. The Blue Jays are getting a lot more from the catching position offensively this year with the acquisition of Deonor Navarro. He's looking for a 70th RBI. He's got 69, which is a career high, a higher batting average. And on top of that, I think he calls a better game than what we saw last year. He sees the ball better. He has worked so well with Burley, Mark Burley this year. This will be his final start of the season with R.A. Dickey going tomorrow. Josh Tolley will get the call. The previous high and runs driven in for Navarro came in 2008 when he was with Tampa Bay. He had 54 ribbies. He has one off his career high in the home runs. He has 12 home runs. He hit 13 last year. In limited action with the Cubs. But a bigger upgrade offensively from last season. Well, he has good at bats, and he's among the league leaders in batting with runners in scoring position, and that's why he's been able to drive in 69 runs. On the ground, J.J. Hardy's been busy. The shortstop right on the money. The Blue Jays have a catching prospect that they just drafted this year, Max Pentecost. He came out of Kennesaw State, same school that Chad Jenkins went to. But I have talked to other organizations, I've talked to other scouts who scouted Pentecost in college, and they rave about his athleticism. He can run. And a very well known scout told me that at the plate, Pentecost reminds him of Paul Mollett. There's a high fly ball into the outfield. Jones over in the alley. Makes the catch. Mayberry's retired. That's high praise, isn't it? Boy, it sure is. Of course, Blue Jay fans remember Molitor for his time here with the Jays in the World Series years, but also he's a Hall of Famer. And yeah, nobody's going to put back Pentecost into the Hall of Fame just yet. No. But it's certainly a great comparison and encouraging. Pentecost is in the instructional league now, and he had injuries. He had a wrist problem this year. He didn't get a chance to play an awful lot in his first pro season, so they're really looking for him to get a full season under his belt this next year. And from what I hear, his bat is a little bit ahead of his defense right now. Well, he's an athletic catcher, and he's truly a catcher. It's not like he's a conversion project. I think they are looking at him as a catcher first and foremost. Dalton Pompey. He has struck out and flied out so far. Pompey is headed for the Arizona Fall League right after the season. On the ground, once again, J.J. Hardy. He is accurate with that arm. Three up, three down. The Blue Jays go quietly in their half of the six. They have a 3 2 lead.
East, and they're headed to the playoff. And if you look at their season by quarters, they got off to a decent start. Four games over 500, then they drop back to 500 in the second quarter. Third quarter, they bounce back, and the ever-important fourth quarter is when they really separated themselves from the rest of the division. Yeah, you start to sprint to the finish line, and that's exactly what the Orioles are doing. The, they've got those wins this season, 95 of them. That's their highest single-season victory total since 1997. Nelman Young chases that first pitch breaking ball. We're going to continue with our acknowledging the great crew in the graphics department. We have Kevin Schnur and Ron Harrison. They both do a good job and they help out with the graphics, put all that information together so we can bring it to you. The audio is very important. Of course, that is how we bring the sound to you. Andrew Stokely heads up the audio department. The audio assists from Mike Hayes and Sean Matthew Jones. So. When you hear the crack of the bat, those are the people that will bring that to you. They do a great job with that. The engineers, Craig Moorman, Tyler Oberg, Will Morrison, and Joey Chan. Thank you. The technical producer, the guy that makes sure the entire operation works, is Dave Schick. He's always been around. He and I have worked together for years. He and Brian Wenwick are responsible for that. A little broken bat to the shortstop. Reyes with plenty of arm throws out Melman Young. Technical director, they're the ones that call the shots. The director calls the shots, but the technical director, they're the ones that answer the call, and they'll get you to switch quick shots from camera to camera, different plays, and fade in and fade out. That's Dan Brenner and Joanna Brennigan. They sit right to the right of the director. A couple of very capable, competent directors that share the duty. Troy Clara. He is directing today. He does most of the games, and he is helped out by Jeff Mather. They really have to understand baseball. <laughs> <laughs> Got to know where you're headed. When you see those shots go from center field to the batter's face, back to the manager, over to the first base coach, that's the director. And Aaron Sanchez loosening up. And when we talk about something, and as soon as you see that subject of our conversation on the screen, that's because the director is listening and paying attention, and it's seamless. It flows very well. They certainly make us look smart. You know, if we start talking about something, it pops up on the screen. Two and one to J.J. Hardy. He's over for two so far. That's a fastball foul back. And all those people you were just talking about in the truck, the best part of our day is when we get to walk into the truck at 3.30 in the afternoon and sit down with all of them, have a meeting. It's the best part of our day. No question about it. We all get together and everybody throws out ideas. We talk about what we think might happen in the game. And everybody has a chance to contribute. Of course, we have various teams that are being rooted for down in the truck, and we're not going to divulge who roots for who. <laughs> <laughs> But there are a lot of baseball fans, and as you might think, there are a lot of different teams that are all represented. Christian Walker is on deck. It's a 3 2 count to J.J. Hardy. He'll take ball four. The all new 2015 Honda Fit. Fit your lifestyle, fit your fun, fit whatever. Jay Happ, his second walk of the afternoon comes with one out here in the seventh. John Gibbons is out of the dugout. He's already made the call to the bullpen. Jay Happ finishes up his season with another fine outing here at Rogers Center. Aaron Sanchez to take over. Happ has the lead.
can win it. He cannot lose it. And he's looking for his 11th win of the season, and he's turned things over to Aaron Sanchez, who picked up the save. His last time out, Sanchez saved a one-nothing game for Mark Burley on Wednesday. What a year it's been for Aaron Sanchez. Also, we were talking about some of the other players that have made jumps. Remember, all the way back in spring training, he was the talk of spring training. How he came out and he was firing strikes, but did not make the team. You were there in Montreal, where Aaron struck out the side in that final inning. Yeah, you were pretty impressed with him. Yeah, I, I was impressed with him all spring long. He showed composure. He showed ability. He showed confidence. He went to Montreal with the Blue Jays in that final weekend of the exhibition season and in front of 50,000 in the last game of spring training. He struck out the side. Walked off the mound with confidence knowing that he could do this. We talked about that today. I said, well, congratulations, young man, on the first season here in the major leagues. I think it went very well. And he said, yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. And I said, we knew this in Montreal, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, he walked out of that stadium and went right to double A. Yeah. I mean, he started at New Hampshire this season. Might not have the big numbers, but you saw strides with the breaking ball and his command better. Went to triple A. Did better there. Came to the big leagues, and he's done better since he's taken that last step. Now he walks the pinch hitter Steve Clevenger. Clevenger was batting for Christian Walker. So now with one out, Caleb Joseph, the catcher, will bat. Blue Jays have a 3 2 lead. Joseph, who's done such a good job for the Orioles, filling in for the injured Matt Wieters. It's been Joseph and Nick Hunley that have taken over the majority of the work behind the plate without Wieters. But Joseph has really struggled lately with the bat. Caleb Joseph coming in this game 0 for 28. Now that's 0 for 29 with a walk. David Lowe has taken over as the pinch runner at first base. Buck Showalter is trying to get a feel for what his bench is going to look like heading into the postseason. They don't have to pick their 25 man roster until Thursday at 10 a.m. So a lot of these guys are auditioning for the postseason roster and they might not know it. There's a strike. It's the first one Sanchez has thrown. One and one to Joseph. With that hard sinking fastball that Sanchez has. This is a great opportunity right here to get a ground ball. Now a player who's struggling a little bit. He's not the fastest guy in the world. Make a good pitch of that fastball. Get out of here. Well, he really pulled that one. It was 99, but well off the plate outside. Aaron's family is in from California for this final series of the season. They've made a couple of trips to see Aaron. Ground ball to second. Tonneson to Reyes for one. Back to first. Scoop by Nader. Good work all around. Reyes full speed across the bag had to throw on the run. He was in the dirt and Mayberry stuck with it and scooped it out of the dirt to end the inning. Nice job by Big John over at first.
Lots of high points during the course of the season and certainly not exactly the end the Blue Jay fans had in mind nor the organization. Midway through the season looked like the Blue Jays had a shot at the postseason and unfortunately didn't end up that way. New pitcher into the game is Brad Brock. 7 and 1, 323 earned run average. Can't throw a ball straight. His fastball's got movement all over the place. Sinker slider type. Throws across his body. There's a good bunt. A terrific bunt. Pilar is headed for second as Brock throws it away. Oh, what a heads up play by Pilar. Reliever comes into the game. He's just trying to throw a strike. He throws the first pitch strike, a sinking fastball, and Pilar drops it down perfectly. It puts him in a tough position to make a tough out over at first base. He has to bounce off of that bound. Heads up play right here by Pilar. He's going to beat this ball out, but look at Brock. That's an unnatural position right there. Told you his ball moves all over the place. Well, that one moves right by Steve Pierce just into the game at first base. Third error of the afternoon by the Orioles. Now they're throwing around a bit, and this is a team that has a good defensive ball. Now Pierce moves in from right field to play first. David Lowe pinch hit for the first baseman. He is now in right defensively. Steve Tollison, number nine hitter, squares to bunt, takes it inside off the plate. Tollison had an RBI double, scored a run in the third. Blue Jays lead at 3-2, trying to get that run back. Beauty. Run right into the third baseman. Casilla goes to first. Tollison gets it done. On the bunt, Pilar moves to third. Perfect bunt by Steve Tollison. You're down at the bottom of the order. You have got to take advantage of the air. In the mistakes of the Baltimore Orioles, you got to bump hit an air. Now you got to punt him over. You got to give Reyes a chance to get that run back. Reyes doubled in the third inning. For Reyes, that's his 32nd double of the season. That's the third highest total in doubles for a Blue Jays shortstop in a single season. Tony Fernandez had 41 doubles in 88. That's number one. The infield is in. Fly ball to center. Pilar back to tag out. Jones setting up for the throw. Here's the throw to the plate. It's a good one right on time. Oh, man, what a throw. Adam Jones played it perfectly. He got set up, lined up to home. Caleb Joseph put the tag on Pillar. John Gibbons is going to come out and talk to the home plate umpire. Jim Wolf who made the call. It's the eighth outfield assist for Jones. Caleb Joseph put the tag on Pillar. Sets himself perfectly. Here comes a throw. Perfect one hop throw to the catcher. Kevin Pilar has got an argument that he avoided the tag and got his hand in there before he was tagged. And it looks like they might look at this one. Well, I tell you, that's a terrific slide. Look at the tag by Joseph. Jim Wolf, the home plate umpire, couldn't have been positioned any better. Look at the umpire. He's in perfect position to swipe tag. His hand is on the plate before he tags him. That's going to be a He RBI. is safe. It's really interesting, too, because Pilar had a collision sliding in at home head first on a wild pitch in the Seattle series and said he wasn't going to head for yeah. a slide anymore. Yeah, what, do we, what did he tell us the next day? He said, that's the last time I slide head first like that into home plate. But I think he had to do it that way. That was the only way to avoid the tag, dive in head first, reach back with your hand, try and get a part of the plate. But uh, heck of an effort right there. It is being reviewed. John Gibbons has the umpire to have a look at it. He's on that plate. Well, his hand is definitely on the plate. And it looks like Joseph was late tagging him. He is safe. <laughs> now it'll be a matter of the interpretation in New York. Jim Wolf. I mean, all he can do is get good position. And he thought the tag had been applied before... Pilar got his hand on the plate. You know, the one shot that we had of Ryan right down there at the 
dugout coming looking right down the third base line was probably the best. Watch this one as he swipes around, gets his hand on that plate. That right now looks like before Joseph makes the tag. But I tell you what, Kevin Pillar does things that make you believe he could be a good player. I mean, he does little things all the time, like the bunt on the first pitch of this inning. He's always thinking about what he can do to contribute, whether it's in the field or at the plate on the base. He's a good base runner. Heads up. Heads up play. Bunch. He goes to second on the air. Moved up on the sacrifice. Watch that front shoulder just avoid the tag and reach back and get the plate. Now it's just do they have enough evidence on the replay that shows that his hand, his fingers are on that plate before the tag is applied. The fans think so. They've been watching the replay just like we have. We're trying to influence the umpires here by saying safe. This is a great shot right here. He reaches around Joseph and swipes his hand across the plate. I mean, he definitely got the plate. Umpires certainly taking a long time to look at this. So he, Call on the field is Jones threw out Pilar. Caleb Joseph made the tag. Now there has to be substantial evidence in New York for them to overturn the call on the field. Jim Wolf on the right made the call. The crew chief is Tony Randazzo. He is on the left. Heck of a throw. By Adam Jones and a heck of a slide by Pilar. Looked like he missed him totally. Jones that would be credited with his eighth outfield assist. Caleb Joseph played it perfectly. It just didn't look like he made the tag. See, now the umpires have decision and they call him safe. Sure enough. So Jones will go back to center. The Orioles have to retake the field. Caleb Joseph. Did not make the tag on Kevin Pilar, who pulled off a nifty slide to score a big run. Baseball player. I mean, that's what you, you think of when you see Kevin Pilar. It looked like he got a face full of dirt also, but he scored a run. Smart, smart play. And he gets his teammate, Jose Reyes, another RBI. Yeah, and that's another thing that gets lost in the shuffle, the fact that his effort... First with the bunt, moving up on the sacrifice, going to second. Everything he did that inning contributed to that run. You know, we were watching Dalton Pompey yesterday. It's almost the same type of slide. It looked like Pompey was thinking about going feet first, and then right at the last minute goes in, and the head goes wham right on the dirt around home plate. Sacrificing your body for a run. Yeah, a lot of things can go wrong when you use that head first slide, especially at home. Two outs, nobody aboard. Jose Bautista takes a breaking ball strike. Took him a long time, but the Blue Jays got an extra run. It's now 4 2. Buck Showalter has to be a little disappointed with the defense this afternoon. They've committed three errors. It cost Wei and Chen an unearned run. Brad Brock on the bunt by Pilar threw the ball into right field and that allowed Pilar to go to second. Then he was bunted to third by Thomason. They also had an error on the first baseman and an error on the third baseman. There's a drive to left. Delman Young is back. And Bautista's retired. That'll end the inning. The Blue Jays get a big insurance run thanks to Kevin Pillar. He got a bunt base hit, scores on a terrific slide, and after review, he is safe.
start. He goes six and a third, gives up four hits, two earned runs, walked a pair, and struck out four through 93 pitches, and now he has a two-run lead. Jay Happ for the season finishes up with a 422 earned run average. And when you look at Happ over the last couple of years, that's the best earned run average that he has had since his rookie season in 2009. Keeps going down like the walks keep going down. He's in line now for his 11th win. If the bullpen can hold it. Former Blue Jay Kelly Johnson. Former everything. <laughs> Kelly Johnson has played with all five teams in the AL East. He's also played with the Braves. He signed initially with Atlanta. Pinch hitting for Jonathan Scope. The Blue Jays got him from Arizona. He came over. He came over in the Aaron Hill trade a couple of years ago. In the last couple of years, he's made tours in every city in the American League East. Three and one. Johnson told us that he felt his experience in Baltimore was a lot like his experience in Tampa Bay as far as the personnel of the club, the personality of the manager, and the atmosphere inside that clubhouse. Now it's three and two. It says the guys just come to play. Show up every day, try and win a ball game. Alexi Casilla would be next. The ball is fouled back to the screen. Aaron Sanchez came into the game in the seventh with a man aboard and one out. He walked the first batter he faced. Steve Clevenger, the pinch hitter. He walks another. Kelly Johnson will go to first base, and he's been around for... Quite a while in the AL East. He was with the Blue Jays for two seasons, 11 and 12. Then went to Tampa Bay, New York. All this year, New York, Boston, Orioles. He's got the East covered. <laughs> 2014, Yankees, Red Sox, and Orioles. Play on winners. That's what it's all about for him. He can play different positions for you, help you out at second, third, the outfield, maybe some first, come off the bench. A little bit of everything. Sanchez with a leadoff walk. Alexei Casilla has three ground ball outs. I want to finish up with our acknowledgement of our great crew. And the captain of the ship in a TV show is always the producer. And we have two of the best in the business. Doug Walton is the lead producer. And he is the guy that has the majority of the work. And he's the one that puts the show together. And. He tries to have decorum in the pregame meetings, but it doesn't always work. <laughs> <laughs> but Doug does a terrific job with us and also helping out producing Rick Briggs Jude, who I've known for a long time. He was with me in my first season at broadcasting. I want to thank the producers for putting together this great team. To see him strikes out, nasty fastball. Finger cooked tonight. Order from over 100 menu items at bostonpizza.com. Proud partner of the Toronto Blue Jays. One out, man, at first. Season winding down. Of course, I couldn't do my job without people I work with up in the booth. And Steph Carson has been with us a long time. He's the stats man. He gives us all the great information and keeps us straight which is always a challenge to keep me straight, that's for sure. But, Scott, I want to thank you for a great season again. And, of course, the broadcast partners are terrific. There's Scotty. He is the king of all stats. Just ask him. <laughs> <laughs> There's a pop-up on the right side, and Mayberry has room. He's on the warning truck and makes the pitch. Two down. But finally, and certainly a big part of what we do are the people that we work with up in the booth. And Joe Siddle is the newest member of our team. He works with Jerry Howard, which is another story totally. But Joe has been a terrific new addition, and he is there with Jerry on the radio today. And we want to acknowledge his fine work. He has been a terrific addition to the radio and certainly has been a very good addition to our TV broadcast. And 
Joe we want to congratulate you on a terrific first season and we know you're going to be around here for a long time. And of course I want to acknowledge my partner Pat Tabla. We've been working at this for quite a while now and Pat thank you for all your great work and the time you put in and make it a lot of fun to come to work every day. And we everybody everybody that you just said want to say the same thing to you. It's been a lot of fun. You make this game and this job so easy to come to work every single day. So thank you. You're you just I tell you what we're all fortunate to have such a good team to work together. Bouncing ball to third backhanded by Valencia. The inning is over but we want to acknowledge our great crew and thank everybody. You make it fun to come to work and we do it a lot. from sportsnet.ca cover every angle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Breaking news, photos, videos, and weekly chats. A one-stop shop for everything Blue Jays. The Blue Jays rundown only on sportsnet.ca and in Carnation laments the, laments the season that could have been shy of eating. Talks to Edwin about his season. It's certainly the disappointment of missing 33 games when you look at his season numbers. 34 home runs, 98 RBIs. He was headed for a monster season and probably would have helped that offense uh, that went a little south when he went out of the lineup but he can still get that century mark a couple more RBIs he gets a new pitcher to hit here in the bottom of the eighth this is the closer for the Baltimore Orioles Zach Britton and he has thrown up some numbers this has come out of nowhere 36 for 40 and save opportunities a 170 earned run average he is getting some work now before the playoffs. The Orioles have switched positions now. Casilla moves from third to second. Kelly Johnson, the pinch hitter, moves in defensively at third base. Jonathan Scope out of the game at second. Zach Britton, the closer, getting some work here in the final Saturday of the season. And Conacion goes after the first pitch. Kelly Johnson throws him out, one down. The all new 2015 Honda Fit. Fit your lifestyle. Fit your fun. Fit whatever. Beautiful afternoon in Toronto. The Blue Jays are enjoying a 4 2 lead. Same score they won by yesterday as they won 4 2. Meet Chris Tillman. Danny Valencia, the third baseman, he's gone 0 for 2 with a walk. Blue Jays have just six hits. Boy, that's been the difference of the season for Zach Britton. 96 with sink. He was hitting 98 in spring training. Just put together an outstanding spring. When the season started, Tommy Hunter was the closer. Still on the team, he's in a setup role now. Britain has just seized the closer's role. Wow, tough to do anything with a pitch like that. 
Well, Britain had been a starter, he bounced around, dealt with some injuries, and came into spring training with a terrific mindset and made up his mind he was going to put everything together. Boy, did he ever. There was a scout right at the end of spring training who wrote a report said he was the best pitcher he saw in Florida. Now that's a mouthful right there. But that's the type of spring that he had for the Orioles. They took notice. Been battling arm injuries the last couple of years. He's finally healthy. Had a shoulder impingement in 12, and that set him back a bit. There you see Casey Jansen loosening up. Two and one to Danny Valencia. When you look at Britain's career throughout the minors, he was a starter. Made 28 starts for the Orioles in 2011, had an 11 and 11 record. Then Baltimore in 2012 made 11 starts, went five and three. And then last year he was injury plagued and just wasn't healthy. But he came to camp healthy and he took over the closers. Well, here he loses Valencia. The drive of the game is brought to you by the all new 2015 Honda Fit. Fit your lifestyle, fit your fun, fit whatever. Third inning, we're going to go back and we're going to watch a couple of doubles. First by Steve Tollison that drives in Kevin Pillar as the ball gets by to see it down the left field line. The Reyes, next pitch, rips this one right down the line, right by the third baseman. Hooks left down into the corner. That hook scored Steve Tollison. Reyes will pick up his 50th RBI on that one. The drive to the game this afternoon. Reyes has had a good day. A couple of hits, a sack fly, scored a run, and drove in two. Navarro goes after the first pitch. With his double today, Reyes has amassed 32 doubles. That's the third highest total for a shortstop in franchise history. He's had a good offensive season. Steve Tallison lately has really been swinging the bat well. He's one for two today with a sacrifice bunt. The RBI double came back in the third. 0 oh, 1 to Navarro. This is a high pop shortstop, J.J. Hardy, just on the edge of the infield. This copyrighted telecast is presented by Authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. John Mayberry Jr. has gone 0 for 3 so far today. He's had a nice day in the field. They can add a couple of low throws. Great target to shoot for, isn't he over there at first base? 6'6 six, six with a long reach. I like John Olerud over there when he was here. Big target. Gives the infielders a lot of confidence. They could throw it anywhere. Big crowd on hand. It's the final Junior J Saturday of the season. And tomorrow will be the final Sunday game. And some lucky fan will win a Honda. This is all part of the fan appreciation weekend. The entire weekend has been put together and presented by Allstate. There goes Valencia. The throw from Joseph. Boy, it's a good, strong throw, but late. Danny Valencia picks up the stolen base. It's first as a Blue Jay. Got a run and lead over there at first base. Britain not paying much attention to him. Watch him just take off. First movement. Caleb Joseph, a strong throw, but no chance to get Valencia. How about this aggressive slide into the bag for his first stolen base? Joseph has thrown out 49% of the runners this year. That was a terrific throw. He had no chance on Valencia. Runner in scoring position for Mayberry. Fly ball in 
to the outfield. David Lowe calls for it, makes the catch. The inning is over. So the Blue Jays will go to the ninth. They have a two-run lead. Casey Jansen into the ball game, trying to save it for Jay Happ. Jansen coming into the game for the 49th time this season, looking for his 25th save. 24 for 29 coming into this one for Jansen. Uh, he normally has a pinpoint control. It, it hasn't been there. He still has only walked seven batters this season. He will have to deal with the middle of the lineup of this team as there's a few more defensive changes for the Blue Jays. Ryan Goins comes in to play second base. Dalton Pompey started in center. He moves to left. Anthony Ghost comes off the bench to take over in center. And Kevin Pillar moves from left field to right field. Bautista is out of the game. Nelson Cruz, Delman Young, and J.J. Hardy. Five, six, and seven in the Oriole lineup. Actually, four, five, and six as Cruz is the cleanup man. He doubled and scored in the second. Hit a triple off of Jay Happ in the second inning. What a season he has put together. 74 extra base hits. Should be a good winner for him. Last year, looked like he was one of those guys who was caught in that compensation rule where they had to give up draft pick. I don't think he's subject to that this winter. I'm not sure how that works, but I think you're right. There's a ball downstairs. Cruz and Waldo Jimenez didn't sign until February. And at that, Cruz got just a one year contract. Slow breaking ball. Mayberry Jr. has room and Cruz is retired one down. Pinch hitter coming to the plate is a switch hitter. Jimmy Paredes. Coming off the bench to Matt for Delman Young. You know, you can see Buck Showalter trying to get his team ready for the playoffs, putting guys in certain situations, getting them a chance to play. He says you can't replicate that by batting practice or inter squad games or, or whatever. You got to get them into these types of games right here. Get them ready for the playoffs. Playoffs are just around the corner, and everything is just about resolved. One and two to the pinch hitter.
Casey Jansen had the big year last year with 34 saves last year. This is going to be number 25 if he can nail it down. Broken Matt Reyes hits short quickly to first. Two down. Plenty of fastball. Boy, he sold off Paredes with that one. His cut fastball, I think, has really improved over the last couple of seasons. Where he throws it, he got Paredes looking out over the plate and just sawed him off with that cutter. Shortstop, J.J. Hardy. Over two. Takes one outside. Side is two and one. The wild card schedule, the AL wild card game, will play will be played Tuesday. Sportsnet will have all of the baseball playoff games. The National League wild card game will be played Wednesday, October first. Now it's two and two. American League Division Series. Starts on Thursday. Both of them. Hot shot. Reyes takes the one hopper. Ball game. The Blue Jays win it by an identical 4-2 score. The same score they won last night. Tonight, this afternoon, it was pitching and defense. Uh, Reyes with an outstanding game at shortstop. Jose was also on base a couple of times, drove in a couple of runs for the Blue Jays. Jay Happ wins his 11th game, and then the bullpen shut it down, shut down the Baltimore Orioles as they look for the sweep tomorrow. Casey Jansen picks up the save. R.A. Right, Dickey will go to the mound on Sunday. Be posed by Miguel Gonzalez. The last game of the year. Stay tuned. Sports Dead Countdown. Coming right up.